Welcome to my modernly lit wood paneled insane asylum. Five stars on Yelp. Hello guys! Um, <clears throat> what flare that was. That's what you come here for. Come for the flare, stay for the... The travel web series that Mamrie Hart and I have been working on all summer, Hey USA, is finally available in full episodes at heyusa.thescene.com. Because we've been spending the summer traveling around the United States, and because I've been binge watching a lot of I, I, Superwoman, I, I videos. I've been inspired to talk to you about the types of people you encounter on planes. I've probably been on planes as much as I've thought about nachos this summer. That's a lot of times. So I feel like I really grasp the type of people that you can run into on planes. Never grasp someone on a plane. Wrong place to grasp someone. Also, maybe never grasp someone. The types of people you experience on planes. The silent but stanky. Anytime you smell a fart and or some sort of uh, rectum queef in your vicinity on a plane and you look around and you see that one person that's just like, I am definitely asleep. They are not asleep. They are pretending to sleep because they definitely dealt it. How do I know this person exists? Because I've been this person. <laughs> Look, I've never worked at a casino, but I have surely dealt it. What's my favorite airline? Delta. This is the person that very clearly is overcompensatingly trying to pretend that they're asleep, but is definitely leaving some silent but deadlies around. And you know what? It's not silent but deadly because you're still awake. It's silent but purgatory. These people are the Prius of farts. Other than farting into a vacuum, it's my favorite place to fart. Next we have the communicator. I hate this person. <laughs> This is the person that will not stop talking to anything and anyone around them on a plane. You can make it very obvious that you do not want to talk to this person on a plane. The wall can make it very obvious that it cannot communicate back with this person, but that will not stop this person. You can't even tell this person to talk to the hand because they will probably talk to a hand. I believe this happens because this person is so full of anxiety or nerves or excitement about flying that they have to overcompensate by just talking to get out all of their feelings. What's their favorite television show? Project Runway. Because as soon as we hit the runway, they just keep projecting. You thought that library of anal toots before was your only problem on that plane? Uh-uh! Now you got audible mouth sharts coming right at you. This person cannot be an astronaut nor a feng shui artist because they do not understand space. Next you have the scaredy scat. This is a person that is very obviously nervous to be on a plane but is very much trying to not make it obvious. So much so that they might have to scat. They got the nervous sh Then you have the invisible fence. This is the person that clearly does not want to be bothered but isn't going to make a big deal about it. They're not going to put up a visual blockade around themselves saying please don't acknowledge me. They're going to put up some very subtle signs that you need to pick up on. And if you're the f***ing over eager corgi that's running towards freedom you're gonna get zapped. How do I know this person exists? Because I'm this person. I got my headphones in. I don't want to talk to you. I'm not making eye contact because I don't want to talk to you. You ask me about myself, I answer in statements, not in questions, because I don't want to continue this conversation. I want to pay whatever ridiculous fee it is so that I can have internet on my flight so I can check my Tumblr tags and my tweets and live in my narcissistic bubble. Please and thank you. Then you have what classical artists refer to as the dream group. They got one clear coping mechanism, and it's clears, tequila, vodka, gin. Then you have the inconvenient youth, the baby on the plane. And f you if you look at a baby like you're pissed off that they're making noise. Yes, a baby crying on a plane sucks a D. But think about it for a second. A baby can only communicate through crying. We chew gum because we know that we're gonna have a change in pressure. This baby has no f***ing clue. So as soon as its brain starts going as we take off, the only way it can communicate is by crying. Also, pretty sure that baby took a sh Which leads me to, uh, the poor parent. Parents that have to deal with babies on the plane. God bless you. While you're trying to transport a baby from point A to point B via plane, I don't know. But I try to understand that what you're doing is very, very hard. I can barely 
get my dog to take a shit in the backyard. And you gotta just walk behind that little swaying, whirling dervish of shit and piss and emotion up and down the aisles like you're walking a two-legged dog that you're teaching a circus trick to. I don't know. Have you ever had a nano pet? You get it then. Last but not least, the shoulder ghost. This is that person that falls asleep on the plane instantly and then does that thing where they hover over your shoulder as if they could drop towards your shoulder at any moment which will cause an awkward social interaction. The only thing we're all striving to avoid every minute of every day. They're like a swaying Jenga tower when Jenga doesn't become fun anymore because everyone knows it's about to fall over and once it falls over the only thing left to do is pick the f***ing game up and everyone looks at themselves like why the f*** did we decide to play this game? This is a stupid game. We should all just be on Tumblr. And if you are a shoulder ghost, stop that. Well, there you go. There are some types of people that you can run into on planes. How does this video help you in your life? I don't know. Make sure that you go watch the full episodes of Hey USA at heyusa.thescene.com. Guys, my book is officially out. Grace has got the order pretending to be a grown-up. It's very exciting. So make sure if you haven't already purchased, you can go to bookstores and purchase it. Or you can go online to gracesguidebook.com and purchase it. It's all very exciting business. And guess where is a great place to read books? Planes. Also everywhere else in life constantly. And if you can't read it because you need to use your hands for things like driving or hand jobs, you can get the audiobook.